Welcome to Salt Creek Online. We're delighted that you've joined us again today for this time of Bible study and songs of praise and worship. I hope you've experienced God's care and blessings and a sense of His presence and His help in meaningful ways during the days of the past week. And I hope that each of us has had time and remembered to pray for others during the time of the unrest and uncertainty that everybody's experiencing these days. Let's pray for our country, pray for our churches, pray for one another as we face the days ahead. Let's bow together in prayer as we talk to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence and care and involvement in our lives. You understand our needs and you know the circumstances and the fears and the difficulties that people face. You're more than adequate and you are more than concerned. You are involved in our lives and we thank you for that. Be everything each one of us needs you to be each day in this coming week. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, Blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us Thine, we are. We are Thine, do Thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep Thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, Blessed Jesus, you hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you hear us when we pray. Early let us seek thy favor, early let us do thy will. Blessed Lord. Our topic today is Jesus the Good Shepherd. We're looking at a passage of scripture in John's Gospel, chapter 10. Shepherds were common in the day of Jesus' earthly life and ministry in Israel, and Jesus often used the image of sheep and shepherds, identifying himself and identifying his people. In the first part of chapter 10, Jesus illustrates false shepherds, and without identifying the Pharisees in particular, he did have them in mind. I'd like for our text to begin with verse 11 of chapter 10, and then we will notice uh, three verses in particular. I want to read, beginning with verse 11, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd and doesn't own the shepherd, leaves them and runs away when he sees a wolf. 
the wolf then snatches and scatters them. This happens because he's a hired man and doesn't care about the sheep. Then these will be our focus scriptures. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. I know my sheep and they know me. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for my sheep. But I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will listen to me. There are three things that stand out in that scripture section in John's Gospel, chapter 10 about Jesus the shepherd and about we the sheep. Many characters in the Bible were shepherds. You remember Abraham was a shepherd. Jacob also. Moses was a shepherd for 40 years. And before David became king, David was a singing shepherd boy. In John chapter 10 and verse 14, Jesus says the good shepherd knows his sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Sheep are often uh, identified with Christians, with followers of Jesus. And Jesus knowing their name, I wonder as shepherds did in earlier times in the Bible lens, they gave descriptive names to their animals. And I wondered if Jesus gives descriptive names to his followers. He knows each of us by name and he calls us by name. Hearing the shepherd's voice always is a good thing. Jesus in this passage talks about the shepherd and the taking care of the sheep. When they're out in the country land for and night comes, the shepherd will find an enclosed area with a narrow opening and put the sheep inside. Then he lays down in the doorway, the entryway, to protect the sheep from animals or from robbers or others who would come to hurt them. If it's in a populated areas, the, there would be a large pen and the various shepherds would put all of their sheep in the pens together. One would guard the, the gate at night. The sheep shepherds could go home then and rest or do other things for the evening. Next day when the shepherds came, each shepherd would call his sheep by name. Knowing his voice and hearing their name, the sheep would come to their shepherd only. And that's what Jesus says when he said, I know my sheep and they know me. The uniqueness of Jesus is that he knows us. He knows our values. He knows our needs. He knows our personalities. And he meets us where we are. Jesus knows his sheep. Another good thing about the good shepherd is that he cares about his sheep. John 10, 15 Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep. He's referencing his crucifixion when he later is nailed to the cross, gives his life as a sacrifice for sinners. In fact, Jesus is the only one who was both a shepherd and a sheep. Do you remember the scripture that said, there goes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, was talking about Jesus 
In that case, he was the Lamb of God. Here he is the good shepherd who looks after the sheep. In the passage of scripture in John chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, it speaks about the thief who seeks to steal the ship, sheep from the fold and to kill and destroy. The sheep, or the thief is a metaphor for Satan. The hired man is mentioned. He works at the job of taking care of the sheep, but if he sees a wolf coming, he forgets the sheep and runs away for his own life. He's a pretend shepherd. He doesn't really care for the sheep. But Jesus said, I care about my sheep. He owns the sheep because he atoned for our sins on the cross. And he says, you are not your own. You are bought with a prize. Paul records in the letter to the Corinthians. Do you remember perhaps reading some years ago the book by Philip Keller titled The Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. That was a delightful book, and if you have access to it sometime, it would be worth reading or reading again. In that book, Keller talks about a young shepherd boy in Kenya who was tending the flock. Of sheep. The sheep were owned by this young boy and other members of his little village. Keller said that one night a young lion attacked the flock and the shepherd single-handedly attacked the sheep with his spear and club. The lion finally got away or ran away, but the young boy was greatly injured and almost lost his life. Keller said the reason the young boy, as a shepherd of the sheep, defended the sheep is because he owned them, along with the other villagers. The owner of the sheep cares for them in a way that just a hireling does not. Another thing that Jesus mentions in this passage about himself being a shepherd, I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep, I care for my sheep, and he says a good shepherd also seeks his sheep. In verse 16 of this passage, he said, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, and then there will be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus is re referencing the Gentiles, saying to the Jews that Gentiles are included, and others other, uh, all over the world are invited to become followers of Jesus, members of his family, sheep in his fold. Jesus talked about Gentiles as well as Jews and others all through the world who would believe in him. In fact, that favorite verse of scripture in John 3.16 says, God so loved the world, the whole world, that he gave his only begotten son. Believers in and followers of Jesus all over the world are part of his fold, part of his family. And Jesus seeks all to follow him. There's an interesting story about a fellow by the name of Ira Sankey. Ira lived back in the 1800s, the time of the preaching of the evangelist uh, Dwight L. Moody. Ira Sankey was popular in the gospel music world and worked with Dwight Moody on many of the gospel meetings that he had around over the country. Ira Sankey was from the North and fought in the Union Army during the Civil War as a young man. 
number of years after the war, Ira Sankey was singing one of his favorite hymns, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. After the service, a man came up to him and said, were you by chance a Union soldier at the Battle of Shiloh? Sankey said, why, yes, I was. The man said, do you remember singing that song, One Night to the Troops? Sankey said, I often sang that song. Why do you ask? The man said, I, you didn't see me, but I saw you. I was a Confederate sniper. I was hidden in the shadows just outside your camp. I took aim at you with my rifle and as you were singing at the campfire and, and he said, I never miss my target. But he said, I, I could not pull the trigger when you started singing that song. I knew the words, Savior like a shepherd lead us, much we need thy tender care. In the pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. The man said, I just could not pull the trigger when you were asking the good shepherd to protect and care for you. And then he said, that song must have saved your life. Sankey said, no, the song didn't save my life. The good shepherd did. Would you this week think about the good shepherd? Think about what it means to be a sheep in his fold, in his flock. Would you listen for the shepherd's voice? Would you try to follow the shepherd in a particular way in your life this week? I know almost surely that you remember times and places when you heard your Savior's voice. You recognized it. You knew, oh, not audibly, but you knew that Jesus, the good shepherd, was speaking to you. And I would guess you probably followed him. Listen to the song that Randy is going to sing about the Good Shepherd as we conclude our worship time. This song is a paraphrase of the most famous scripture about God as a shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. It was written by Isaac Watts in the 1700s. It's in our Baptist hymnal. It's called, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. My shepherd will Mercy's sake in paths 
Come.